Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Themed Office Hours with Jess. Today, I'm going to be talking about my F31 grant writing experience. I recently went and spoke to um, the grant writing class in my department, which I took um, last year um, about this. So I thought I would share all of these tips um, and learning experiences with you all as well. So small disclaimer, I do want to let you all know I did submit an F31 um, for the December um, 2021 deadline, and I recently found out that it was scored and discussed, but not high enough to get funded. Um, so I know I often talk on this channel about how I'm like hyper productive, I like love publishing first author papers, all this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, like I've also mentioned, part of grad school is not always going to be filled with success. And this was an instance where I put a lot of hard work into something um, that didn't yield the ideal outcome, but I still learned so much through the process. I don't regret doing this at all. And I'm going to share a little bit about why that was the case here. So I just want to flash this timeline. So this is kind of how I spent my 2021 in terms of getting through that year of grad school, um, which was my second year going into my third year, um, to sort of map out month by month what my life looked like. So in January of 2021, I started my grant writing course in my department, which was required for all um, doctoral students in my department. And then in February, I began meeting with my advisor um, weekly um, to discuss what I wanted my dissertation aims to be, um, which was definitely on the early side. And I was also studying for my qualifying exam um, that spring semester. So there was just a lot going on. But in the months of like February and March, I met with my advisor a lot. I also met with other potential dissertation committee members to bounce ideas off of them as well. And then I used that grant writing class, the assignments in that class to develop my aims and write up a specific aims page um, and you know, the research strategy. And then in May, I took my written qualifying exam, whole different beast, which I'll make a whole nother video about. Um, I passed, which is great. Um, and then I, um, to, over the summer, um, just took it easy, prepared for my oral exam, um, but mostly had fun. Um, and then in September, I decided to complete my oral exam um, or defending my dissertation aims, then passed that as well. So I was really happy. Um, and then October, I was like mulling over, okay, so do I wanna apply for that F31? I know the December deadline um, is probably the one I would shoot for. Um, so then in November, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. And then I worked on the F31 nonstop. Um, again, this was a little bit of a rush timeline, and I'll get to why in a little bit, um, but I did end up submitting on time for the um, December 8th, 2021 deadline, and yeah, that was my 2021 in a snapshot. Um, I did get my score in um, March, so earlier this month of this year. So the instructions for the F31 are all online. I've included the link for the latest one here, um, but I'm not gonna go through the nitty gritty of like, okay, these are the documents you're gonna need to put together because you can figure, well, it's, it's, a, it's a little confusing, but if you have questions about that, just leave it in the comments and I can address them. But I'm here to more talk about sort of like a bigger picture of my uh, personal learning experiences through this process. I also wanted to share you all on the three aims that I did end up submitting. Um, again, I'm not gonna read these, but you can pause and take a read if you'd like. Um, I did get a little bit of feedback that maybe my third aim was a little bit too separate from my first two because it was more of a qualitative aim, but I just love qualitative research so much. I was like, I can't let go of that aim. Um, and I don't know if that like helped or hurt my application, but um, just wanted to let you all know that um, you generally want your F31 aims to be very tight, very cohesive, and like really tell a good story and have them kind of all fit together. In developing my aims for the F31 and essentially like I, what I essentially did is I used my exact dissertation aims and then used that for my F31 because I didn't want to do any extra work. I was like, I already am kind of like pushing it a little bit with like having to do this all in a little bit over a month. So I was like, I'm just going to use my dissertation aims for my F31 aims. 
But how I got to my dissertation aims is like I mentioned earlier, those weekly meetings with my advisor um, that I started in um, early in the year in 2021. Also meeting with my committee members to bounce ideas. Like sometimes your committee members just know like, okay, these are the gap areas in the field right now where we need more research. And that might not be something that you will know right off the bat. So it's like really great to talk to experts in the field about sort of what they're noticing um, could be also uh, good areas for dissertation aims. Um, it's also really important to like figure out what data sources you can use and make sure that they're readily available and that you're not gonna have to wait like two or three years um, to collect your own data or for a data set to finish being collected, or it's going to take like a year to grant you access to a data set. Like this is all really important because you want to make sure that you can graduate on time and you're not proposing something that is going to take forever just to even get access to the data or it's going to be behind like a huge paywall or something. Um, and again, I really use the assignments in my grant writing cap class to scaffold um, and just be the rough draft of my F31, essentially the at least the aims and science part of my F31. A couple of things I wish I knew ahead of time. Um, so I spent way too long deciding whether or not I wanted to even apply. Um, I think after I defended my oral um, qualifying exam, I was like, woo, yay, I'm a PhD candidate and kind of like basked in that for a little too long. And then like when I sat down to actually look up when the application was due, um, I also found out that, so for me at my school, um, we actually have a grants department that submits the application for you. They like review it and they have this whole process and the materials were due to them 10 business days before the actual grant due date. So I was like doing the math, like, oh my God, like with Thanksgiving and that long holiday and all these other holidays, um, the December deadline is actually a mid-November deadline. So that's when I was like, alarm bells went off because I was like, I barely have time to put this together. Like, is this going to be feasible? But of course, knowing me, I did it anyway. So what I did is I literally just created a table and turned it into a calendar and had a daily to-do list of like, okay, every day, this is what I'm going to do to like, finish a piece of the F31 application um, and mapped it out and created check boxes, moved things around. Like this was really helpful just so that I could see, okay, I have this many days left before it's due. Um, it was due internally November 19th, which I think was the Friday before Thanksgiving break. So that gave me motivation to be like, okay, like how fastly am I approaching that date? Like what other items do I have on my to-do list and to be able to make it work. So as you can see, I did front load a lot of stuff. Um, but as I got closer to the deadline and like, I was like, oh, wow, I'm actually like checking things off. There were days where I didn't have to work on it. So um, I think it's, it's definitely doable. Um, I would have wanted to start earlier. I know people recommend like three to six months to prepare for a big training grant like this. And, you know, I decided not to go that route. Um, that might have not been like, I don't know, maybe having more time would have allowed me to write a better application, but this is the circumstances I was under and I made the most of it. It's also important to find a way to stay organized. Um, there are so many components to the application. Um, I think the document that ends up getting submitted to NIH at the end of the day is like a hundred pages long. So there are so many things you need. And you also need to gather so many different documents from different people. So what I did is I just created a folder for every single like document type that I needed to include in the application um, just to stay organized. I even numbered them so they would be in the order that they had to appear in the application um, and use this to like save all my drafts and my materials and all of that for each document type that's a part of the application. Um, the grants department um, of my school also gave me a checklist um, that had all of the items that they needed because I had to ultimately submit all these to them. And then I just created my own columns here about like my progress, like what my priority was. I did the whole categorization of like easy, medium, hard, which I explained in another video. Um, and then again, the status. So um, it's also good to have a kind of official tracker like this.
Some tips in the actual writing part. Um, so again, like I said, it's an over a hundred page document and it's all written documents. So someone has to write them. Um, and I do have to say, um, to be prepared to write your own letters of recommendation that you request. So the application allows you to provide three to five letters of support. Um, and I ended up asking five people to write my letters of recommendation. And most of them asked me to draft the first draft yourself. And I think it's a good exercise um, because you get to sort of like learn how to write about yourself and um, sort of brag about yourself and be proud of what you can do and really put that all down in one place. Um, so it is a good exercise for yourself personally, but you know, after doing it like five times in a row, I was having trouble finding like new synonyms to be like, Jessica is so blank hardworking, you know, like I, I had to like go to the thesaurus and like really find ways to make the letters sound different. So it does get a little exhausting and I just wanna let you all know that that is the case. Um, another tip, um, again, I always say this, but do the easier pieces first. There are a lot of one pagers that are a little bit more straightforward than like putting together the really detailed training plan. So do those easier one pagers first so you can get those checked off on your list and then move on to the harder materials. Again, that to do list will seem daunting at first, but once you start making your way through each item, it will feel doable. Like I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to do this. And as someone as organized and like, hyper efficient as I am, I was still just like overwhelmed by like, oh my God, why are there like 15 documents that I need? But once you just start getting through it, like then I was like, oh wow, I have free time now before the deadline, you know? So it, it's totally doable. Some other overall tips. Um, I would definitely reach out and meet with the NIH program officer of um, the department you're gonna submit to early, like this should be the first step. I did this before I started working on any documents, any part of the application or anything, um, because they'll give you insight as to sort of what to focus on. Like you can send them a draft of your aims and they'll take a look at that too. And they just give some an overall good advice and they can be a person of contact. So if you have any questions as you're doing the application, they can also help. It's also important to work really closely with your advisor or whoever your sponsor or your mentor, your main mentor is for the F31. Uh, my advisor, who was my main sponsor, like line edited the science portion of um, my application and really like took at least one look at every other document that was a part of my application. Um, so it's really important to get feedback and not just work on this like by yourself, heads down. Also another big piece of advice that I don't think I really understood when I was working on this um, and wish I had known is that the training plan truly is more important than your aims and your description of how you're gonna carry out your aims. Like the training plan is the most important. Like they care more about, you know, how often you're gonna meet with your advisor and like how exactly they're going to mentor you um, than they do about like how innovative your aims are. And that's something I think I didn't really value, like take seriously enough when I was putting together the application. So remember, going through the process of submitting an F31 is a learning experience in itself and a huge accomplishment. Um, you get to familiarize yourself with the grant submission process. I just remember when I turned it in on like, or when I got the notification that the grant had gone in on December 8th, I was so proud. I was you know, I had no clue what the outcome was going to be, but I just went around to my friends bragging, like, you know, I just submitted my first NIH grant, like, look at me. And it was something that I felt really proud of. Um, and now, even though, like, I know what my score is, um, I'm still proud that I did this process. I do feel like when I submit my next grant, which might be an F32 or a K award when I'm a postdoc, I'll just be less, like, in the dark about this process. I already know about how bureaucratic and how many steps there are to like get certain things done and submitted. Um, so again, definitely a worthwhile experience.
So thank you all again. Um, again, please leave any comments and or suggestions. If you have any like really specific comments about certain documents, like if you're actually working on this and you need you have a specific question, I'm more than happy um, to answer those for you if you leave it in the comments section. Um, so thank you all and um, good luck with your F31s if you're working on one.